You actually think we're gonna get down there? Oh yeah. All right, well let's go. <laughs> That's tall. <laughs> That's almost up to the freaking eaves. Today's video, we didn't get any old test grounds. We headed to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan where they average between 25 and 30 feet of snow a year. Well, it is safe to say they've got a lot more snow than we got. Yeah. What's that? Way more snow than we get. Yeah. At least twice as much. Yeah. Those banks are as high as, as the side door of the cab. <laughs> we made it. And I gotta admit, they do beat me with snow. All right, today's video, guys, we're gonna have Alex from Team Dirt Monkey. We've got Steve from Aaron's, right, Steve? Yeah, good to see you again, Stan. Good to see you again, and you are? Jason. Jason, and what do you do, Jason? Uh, platform manager for Mammoth and Commercial Snow. Okay, and you are? Jeff. Jeff, nice to meet you, Jeff. What do you do? I am the testing technician for this program. Okay, and you are, sir? Uh, I'm Nick. Nick. I'm the product manager for Aaron's Snow. Nice to meet you, Nick. I'm Doug. Doug? The test manager, so I run the test site up here. Oh, you run the, the abandoned army base that we're at? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, Correct. that we're at. Okay, and you are? Robert Enter, product director, Aaron's King of Snow. Camp Robert Park. Enter. And today's test grounds, guys, we've got snow banks that are clear up to the hill. We're going to be testing out a snow blower. We're going to be testing out a V plow. We're going to be testing out a broom. We're going to be looking at different salt units, how they have these things configured. And we're going to be bringing all this to you before we're done with this video. So, Sit back, enjoy your popcorn, and let's go for a ride, guys. You're gonna walk us through, what, what What are we looking at with these things? We got three different mammoths here. So we got the V-plow v on, 36 inch snowblower, and then our 44 inch brush. Okay, I see you got a cab on one of them, so a cab is an option. Cab's an option, yep. Because I know people were screaming for a cab before, so is this a standard, uh, pr is this like the, the standard configuration yeah, for the cab? Yeah, standard cab, yep keeps you a little bit warmer when you're blowing snow. Okay, so it's got a wide open back, so you can step off pretty easily. So we've got a cab on one, we've got a salter unit on another one over here. Looks like we've got a spray unit with a hand one on it. Tell yep. me about this, will you, yep, Robert? Ab absolutely, so we're fit up with uh, two of our biggest accessories here. We have the brine kit, which comes standard with the tanks. And then you have to add on, so there's 20 gallons of brine capable, nice blue cap so you don't mix up. So this is your brine tank yeah. built so right into brine the unit. Tank. Yep. Every unit has it a yes. built, a well, brine tank built in. Well, basically the base or the foundation is set for it. So it has it included with the product. Okay. Uh, and then it, it really brings the two tanks together in a valve system over here, and then it drops into a pump. All of that is stuff that you have to option. Um, so, and then it comes with- Oh, so really this is a tank too? Yeah, that's a tank too. Yep, yep, and that's hand patented, right? Yep, yep. So that's something that's really, we tried to reimagine this category as best we could uh, to understand what does the user need, what is the opportunity. We wanted to make sure the engine was serviceable, so it's front and center. It's Kawasaki EFI. Oh, nice. Uh, class leading horsepower. Right here yes. is what drove the design yeah. of the machine. In, in our, in, and because this is ta the attachment that requires the most power you got it. and draws the most down yep. on the machine. Yep. So we knew that running it with hydraulics wasn't going to cut the mustard, it wasn't going to provide enough. Uh, power to the attachment. We know that with hydraulics there's an efficiency factor so the most you can get is like 60% efficient typically out of hydraulics. Uh, so we wanted to go really with uh, tried and true PTO. You'll see you'll uh, so you drive did a, shaft. a director a Dr direct drive yep. PTO to maximize the power from the machine. Yep directly to the attachment if i'm understanding this correct is that it, right Roger? so to help you guys visualize what he's actually talking about think of a tractor a tractor uses a direct drive pto off from the back of it to power the implements so that big knuckle and shaft that spins that's what they use here okay yep right on the money so really it's kind of like the fusion of those two core competencies that we have so we brought those together in this product built it around our earliest prototype was a two-stage unit we, we learned some things and then we're like you know what 
it's it can do more than just two stage. So then we started. We're like, okay, what other attachments should we? And be you offering? got the best hand warmers in the market, yes, by we the do. way. Yes, I was you. out last night. We were out plowing with with the mammoth. There you go. At one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, one o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah. You guys don't stop, do you? No, nope, <laughs> we didn't. Ha we didn't have a chance to stop, and I had my gloves off. Yeah, I did. Nice. Too. And you nice. took yours off. Nice. <laughs> those, those came off right away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the it's, a, it's the small things that aren't so small, right? That's right. Important. So are these the backbone of your attachments here? The blower, Absolutely. the V plow, and yes. the broom? Yes. We do. We also have a straight blade. Um, but really, it's ever since we've released the, the V plow this past summer, we see a lot of the demand really heading in that direction. It, the, the V plow, uh, so we have a trip edge plow, which is different than some of our other competitors in the market. So then when you hit an obstacle, you don't lose the load. It doesn't drive that, that into the operator. Really, you just, you just, you jump the obstacle and then you keep pushing snow. So it doesn't slow you down. And then, the, and then it also trips whether or not you're in V mode or if you're in scoop mode. So okay. either way, you so hit it'll, something, it'll trip. Either it'll way, always works. trip. Yep. So that's a strong advantage of this plow. And the, and then we, but the plow also, does not require a PTO hookup at all. So I see the shaft is off on that one. Yep. You got it. And then we've got a shaft on on the broom. So. Yep. That's the that's the deliver the maximum to the broom. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And you can really absorb a lot of horsepower with a broom as well. So, what is this switchover time? Then? Yeah, it's like less than five minutes. I, okay. Yeah. To time it really, I never really time myself, but. But we're saying five minutes or under for a guy that's competent, not twenty five minutes in a shop. No. Right. You could do it out here in five minutes. Yes. True. Yeah. So where are we today? You 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 brought me up to Calumet. Calumet, Cal 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 Michigan. Copper Country. Yes. Copper yeah. Country. We're at an abandoned, uh, what is it, Navy? Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force radar base. And it's abandoned. Abandoned. Yep. And yeah. you guys yeah. have this area to play in. Yep. Yeah. So where are we going? We're going to go play in some abandoned uh, neighborhoods here. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to actually try to get down to them houses down there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to go clear this guy out here. It looks like he's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The he's severely the abandoned guy. <laughs> 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 you actually think we're going to get down there? Oh, oh yeah. Fine. All right. Well, let's go. Snowblower is what typically will draw the most power out of a unit. How well it can handle the snowblower should be an indicator of how well it can handle some of the other attachments. So let's just listen to see if that engine is bogging down at all. This is an abandoned military housing compound. It, yes, it was a compound in support of the radar base. Okay. From way back when. Yep. Since abandoned, obviously, obvious, but it works out well for us because I mean we need the snow to test, especially late into the season when uh, we we test our equipment good and hard, and you never know stuff happens. So we, sometimes we have to run a little bit later on tests. This is uh, this is perfect for us. I'm not joking. When we were driving up. There was a pole the size of this this telephone pole right sure, here. Sure. And on the top of it, it had a, an arrow and it said record snowfall total. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It had yeah, a year. That is, that, is that real? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, li you live here, right? Yes. It was, it was as high as that pole. Yeah. 
Yes, 30 feet. That is correct. 30 feet. Yeah. And there's actually a marker on there that they move each year to the amount of snow we had the previous year. I saw that. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yep. I yep. saw that too. 30 feet of snow. How? What do you do when you have 30 feet of snow, sir? Party. Go <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if I got six inches of snow every single day, yeah. I would not be satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> you need more? Yeah. I need more. Oh, jeez. That's what it takes to live up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you call a Michigan yeah. man. <laughs> he gets sad when summer comes. <laughs> I uh, walked into the garage. <laughs> yes, they beat us in snow. <laughs> what are we showing next, you guys? Um, I think we want to probably clear another path to get through here, but I think probably the V-plow or the broom, obviously. Yeah, let's get the broom, the broom down, down here. The broom yeah. down yeah. we'll, we'll clear this That's up. This is like the perfect the broom area yeah. right oh, here. Yeah. The broom and the blower will typically be the two attachments that draw the most power and are hardest on the engine. The snowplow, on the other hand, requires the most traction. So we get to test it all today. So what were you saying now? There's a built-in feature where the this adjustment here can go all the way down and on the inside it'll interfere with the augers to help with clumping. So you get deep clumping going on and allow the salt to fall down. Uh, so you don't have to have a vibration kit on this unit. Oh so intentionally if somebody has this unit now and they're noticing a clank that's purposely built in to declump the salt. That's correct. Okay, 350 pound bags, 380 yes. pound bags? Uh, 50 pound bags. So 150 pounds roughly yep. total. So 280 pound bags yep. as well. Okay, for the salt? Yep, for the brine here. For yep. the brine. For the brine. Yep. And, and, is the, and is this, this the... Is for a salt spreader. This is for the salt spreader? This is the control this unit yep. right here? Yep, and then the, uh, the, the extra lights on here. Yep. The work light and then the uh, hazard lights on there. That's also controlled by this module. And then we have uh, tractor hazard lights uh, on the unit right well, now. What can you tell me about this module? Then? So for the most part, you have speed right here. Okay. Um, on off, uh, and then you've got the just added accessories that can go along with it. So it just basically drops the salt right out of there. It doesn't actually spread it. It just kind Correct. of, just as wide as that passes, that's as wide of a pass right as you get. Yep. 30, 33, 36. Okay, so it covers your path, yep. is what yep. it does. Yes. You can adjust the drop width, so it can go from 30, 33, 36. So there's little baffles that you can flip around underneath here yep. that oh. allow for you to, to manage how much you're dropping. Then it's also, it's dropping salt behind the unit instead of in front of the unit, so it isn't just kind of running over its own salt. Okay. Hey. Oh yeah, holy sh**. <laughs> That's tall. <laughs> That's almost up to the freaking eaves. Well, that was too easy.
switch it from from B in scoop mode to a straight blade mode. So the best so the best way to do it is keep it up off the ground just slightly. Okay. And then you're just gonna take and swap out these pins. Lift up the bar. And the reason you want to have it off the ground because now you got free play here. Just swap it back over. Oh, that's pretty simple. Just throw that back on. Yeah. And now she'll be. Now it's a straight blade. Straight blade. With the angle. Angle, yeah. An angle straight blade. They go in or out, and then there's three additional nozzles right at the operator's toes. So you get a good wide coverage across. So it. this actually, oh, so you got a nozzle here. This is the wand. You got the wand. That's the wand. But you got a nozzle. And there's, there's three underneath, right under, right forward of his feet. There's okay. There's three more right underneath. So there. this is, does brine and rock salt. It does there. brine and rock salt. Yep. Oh. Yep. And we okay. have the brine behind the rear tires so that we're also here again. We want to salt the brine behind the rear tires. Okay, and then your, your pressure control is right here. Okay, and what do you want the pressure set at? We usually set around 40 to 45 while we're, while we're doing testing, but it all depends on how, you know, how much brine you want to lay down, uh, you know, how much you want it to last. You know, the more higher the pressure, you know, the more you're going to use. Okay, okay. So we got it all right here, and then this is your, this is for your control. Yeah, okay, so I just put that. You can actually see it coming out. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice path. Go a little way, Steve. I want to see how that path looks. Yeah, look at that. There you go. Okay. Flip her up once, turn her off. Let's see how, how responsive she is. Yep. All right. So both rock salt and brine are built right into the unit. And do you need a separate pump for that then? Yeah, it's a separate kit. A separate, but the tanks are built onto it. It's yep. just the pump itself you need separate. Yeah, the pump and the hose, the hoses and the, and the nozzles. Okay.
all these attachments <laughs> available now, you guys? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, so how much is the base price unit? The tractor is $14,999. Okay, and then uh, every single thing on it is a line item thing that you can add correct. And, and so you can build your own, correct? Exactly, yeah, build it for whatever site or, or whatever your business needs are. And so everything is available right now at different dealers or you guys are running yep. into this shortage supplies that everybody else is hitting? We'd always love to have more, but yes, they're all available at dealers. Okay, how's the warranty on them? Uh, two years, 500 hours for the tractor. Two years, 500 hours. Okay. And what else should we know about these things, you guys? What else would you like to say? We tear all those units down at the end. We take a look at it, making sure that everything is up to our customers' expectations, to our brand standards. Um, and just trying all these different environments. We get a great place like this to test all different types of snow conditions. Uh, we have our lab back home. Where we're doing bench testing, uh, doing different all sorts of testing that we can do around site there as well. Um, but just basically putting every bit of conditions that can go out here. So the, the snowblower's been mostly tested at probably what, two feet higher snow, uh, and, and then continually as the snow falls here to keep going from there. So yeah, so we we have full confidence in this machine. All right, all right, you guys. Well, big thanks goes out to these guys for meeting us out in Michigan. Big thanks goes out to Alex for putting up with me for the next three days while we drove all the way out here and back. Because to prove a point that yes, they do actually have more snow than us. So congratulations, <laughs> yeah, you guys. We bow down defeat. I think we humbly can admit that oh, for sure. by any means. But now next, what do you guys think of these machines? Tell me in the comments down below. And how would you build your machine? Would you put a cab on it? Or would you put a snow blower on it? A broom? Would you put a V plow? Would you have a brine tank on it? How would you put your how would you build your ultimate machine? I want to hear that down below. But that's it for this one. God bless you guys. Go get them and we'll guys we'll catch you on another one.